This will cover the area of our annual training industry benchmark report uh, that we call what do learners really want. So to help bring you up to speed, if you don't already know, we are the best training management system provider on the planet. Yeah, okay, I'm a bit biased, but as the software we provide sits at the heart of hundreds of training companies, we can use that data alongside the feedback from the annual questionnaire that goes out to the industry, not just our clients, to help us compile this report and ultimately guide our product too. Yesterday, I discussed the training industry benchmark report and the feedback from the eyes of the training providers. If you missed it, don't worry. All of the sessions are recorded and will be sent out following the event in the coming days. You'll all also be sent a copy of our training industry benchmark report, or if you can't wait, you can download it on our website at any time. Just visit accessplanet.com. Today, we'll discuss the learner's report and more importantly, what the learners want from their learning. I'll be asking if the market is keeping up with demand using real-time data, as well as data from the report and help you assess your offering going forwards. So what do learners really want? Well, one of the key points for the learners this year was instructor-led training or ILT for short, is still the most popular. Uh, a good thing, as it was one of the big takeaways from the training provider's viewpoint yesterday as well. So with a little bit of detail, uh, we asked learners which training delivery methods worked best for them. Uh, perhaps not so surprising, in a post-pandemic world, the top of the tree was all of the instructor-led training delivery methods. So learners, it seems, are very much wanting human interaction as much, if not more so now, than pre-COVID. Uh, so this one, actually this graph shows what the training providers are offering. The industry, thankfully, it seems, are keeping up, uh, sorry, are expecting the online revolution to keep growing and the in-classroom demand to drop slightly in the next year. I guess time will tell on this, uh, but with the amount of new learning methods and ways to deliver courses from gamification, AR, VR, technology becoming ever more widespread, it will be an interesting one to watch moving forwards. The other big areas that providers are expecting an increase in is one-to-one -one coaching and online self-service learning or e-learning type courses. Again, it will be interesting to see how expected versus reality unfolds. Feeding on from that, the preferred method of delivery from the learners is the traditional face-to-face -face classroom format. Next favoured was the one-to-one -one coaching and closely followed by the live virtual delivery methods, Zoom, Teams, WebEx, etc. To summarize this, it's clear that in a post-pandemic world, the flexibility of online delivery is very important, but having that face time with their instructor and other delegates in the same room is very much the big want. This is shown not only from the report, but also from our platform data analytics. Based on our clients' usage, year over year, the numbers of in-person classroom delegates has increased significantly. The metric most providers use as a tool to measure success is customer and delegate satisfaction. So making sure to deliver good value courses to the learners moving forward, it seems, will be a key. However, the caveat to this is that typically in-person courses are more expensive to run. Generally, harder to get the same number of delegates to attend on that same set date. And so the trade-off for satisfaction versus profitability will be a battle that is far from over just yet. We'll be keeping a close eye on it uh, to see what numbers tell us over the rest of this year and into next. 
The other big takeaway is that digital learning demand is on the rise for the learners. Instructor-led, as we just said, is very much the preference over the 100% online e-learning methods. But it seems the work that's being done and has been over the last few years has really helped digital learning become more engaging and more enjoyable for those that are receiving it. So blended learning, it seems, is one way to potentially tick all the boxes. The next talks will no doubt cover this in more detail too. So what is blended learning? Blended learning is a course with a technology component alongside a non-technology component. Sounds simple enough, right? So what does that look like in real terms? Well, here's a general example, shall we say. I won't read it all out to you, but as an example, you can see that there's a little bit of instructor-led coupled with some online, then an exam at the end. Something similar to this. This is actually a, a, an example course that we've taken uh, just to show you a, a potential pathway or a potential learner's journey uh, for uh, well, carbon footprint, actually. Okay, so now we've got some examples in mind of what do learners want? Well, the data we collected, and crucially, as I said before, data from our platform usage too, suggests that learners and providers both see the future as a mixed approach. The learners still crave in-person classroom interactions, but also want to have a self-led online element in conjunction with it. A blended approach then, it seems, could be the biggest area for growth. Our platform data shows more and more providers are utilizing a range of media formats to help keep their learners engaged. We've seen huge increases in knowledge document courses, uh, as we call them. Uh, that's materials that need to be read, digested before a course, maybe. Uh, videos, documents, downloads. Uh, as well, as we've seen a, an uplift in online e-learning usage as part of bigger awards and learning pathways. I know it sounds like a bit of a mix of messages in there. And this session was designed to provide takeaways that you can action and use. So here goes. Every provider is unique. They all offer something different, different courses, different delivery methods, and ultimately interact with their learners differently. The best advice we can give is to aim for a mixed approach. Not only that, but to look at the data from your courses. Maybe this isn't rocket science, but are all of your courses, uh, are all of your in-person courses oversubscribed, but your online or under headcount? Listen to your learners. Make sure you focus on delivering more of the training that's ultimately in demand. In summary then, learners seem to want a mixed approach. They want in-person learning, but they also like online too. Best practice is if you can, provide them a choice. Above all, make it easy to find for them. On your website, through your advertising, make it simple and easy. How you achieve blended really comes down to you as the provider. I know some of you will be thinking, we could never do online modules. This isn't to say you have to, it's just in an ideal world, most learners want to mix. Now, if you want to have a copy of the report in full to digest at your own pace, like I said before, feel free to go to our website, accessplanet.com, and download it, or we'll send you it as a link alongside all the other Everest materials in the coming days too. So any questions, anything anyone's got to add, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, not promising I'll answer them all, but I'll do my best.